Chapter 21, Cardiovascular System. <clears throat> um, our learning outcomes are outlined for you here. We are in chapter, um, again, 21. It's on page 339. Okay. <clears throat> we are talking and discussing here um, the beginning of the cardiovascular system. This is one of six chapters. So um, this is focusing on assessment and therapeutic measures. Um, the mediastinum of the heart and the pericardial sac are the two areas that we are first going to discuss. Um, that's the location of the heart is in the mediastinum, which is in the thoracic cavity of the chest, area of the chest, the body. Um, it's enclosed with three membranes, and those are um, the outermost is the pericardium, and um, it forms a loose-fitting pericardial sac around the heart. The second or middle is the parietal pericardium, um, and then we have the innermost layer, which is the visceral pericardium or epicardium. Okay, so um, these are outlined for you here. Here is a illustration of the anterior heart view. Make sure that you re-familiarize your, with yourself with this. <clears throat> Jonna, you can put out another video of your review on that heart flow system. That's good, how you, through the heart, the heart, um, blood traveling through the heart. Okay, and review this diagram. I said to hear cardiac structure and vessels. Okay, so we have the four chambers. Um, the right, the left atrium, and then the right and left ventricle. We have the cardiac layers, epicardium, myocardium, endocardium, the coronary arteries, the valves. This is the tricuspid, pulmonic, mitral, and aortic. Okay, so we're just lying down the basic um, anatomy um, the workings um, here, this is again review for you all. So um, this is our blood flow um, path. So from the vena cava, it comes in to right atrium, the tricuspid valve, right ventricle, pulmonic valve, pulmonary artery to the lungs, pulmonary veins, the left atrium, mitral valve, left ventricle, and aortic valve, and then out the aorta. So please review and make sure you have this blood flow path down and that you are familiar with how that works. Um, it is, uh, there's a great illustration for you on page 342, um, starting with number one, the, um, how the SA node is the first location of a cardiac impulse. And it goes through six, all the way through the Pernicke fiber. So that's the conduction pathway. Um, oh, let's see. Cardiac conduction. Okay, so that's what I just said here. Sorry about that. <clears throat> this is the pathway I was just talking about. So from one, you see here it goes from the SA node down to the um, conducting fibers here and the both atria um, both atria start contracting it from this point then we go to the impulse travel along the three the AV node right so that's here and then they go um, down to the bundle of his also called the AV bundle which is here um, five is the uh, branches to the right and left bundle branches here. So right and left. And then to the Pernicke fibers, Purkinje fibers, sorry. The Purkinje fibers are the conduct the impulse throughout the muscle of both ventricles, causing them to contract and sim simultaneously, to, uh, to contract simultaneously almost. Cardiac output. You heard this. Um, talked about a lot. So um, amount of blood ejected from the left ventricle in one minute. So it's the stroke volume multiplied by the heart uh, rate. So this is how they can um, 
make a, uh, on a scale, sh show what the cardiac output is. So um, that's how it's calculated. Here we have a system regulation of the heart. So this is on page 343. And these are the different factors affecting heart rate, right? So we know things such as um, your norepinephrine and your how we are, are it affects our heart, um, exercise um, or stress can induce this um, acceleratory center um, and inhibitory center. So these are just um, along the pathways of different stimulations and how our brain intakes. So into the medulla, the brain contains the cardiac center, right? So when things like it can be from stress, like sudden news or stressful situations or um, that not alone just from exercise or maybe um, – taking drugs or doing something like that, that would cause that cardiac center to be alerted. <clears throat> Hormones and the heart. I told you guys, you know, hormones affect everything in our body, including our heart. Epinephrine increases the heart rate, force of contraction, cardiac output, systolic blood pressure. Um, then we have aldosterone, which regulates our sodium and potassium. Very, very important. Um, when we're discussing medications, this is vitally important. Um, atrial natropatric uh, peptide excretes sodium. So, again, for medication purposes. Um, here are blood vessels that are going to be involved. We have arteries, which are the very largest uh, pathway for our blood. Um, our veins, and then our capillaries are the teeny tiny ones, right? Veins are in the middle category, which we can like, get blood from. We can get blood from any of these, but just a regular venous stick, generally you get it from a vein. Arteries are for larger um, blood flow. Here is the structure of blood vessels. So um, that's all broken down. Review that. Blood pressure. This is the blood force against the blood vessel walls. So normal is about 120 to 80, over 80. Um, so a systolic of 120, diastolic of 80. Again, this is a range, and you guys know that, you know, it can vary a little bit, but 120 over 80 is about what we say for an adult is normal. Um, our renin, angiotensin, aldosterone mechanism, okay? Um, this is uh, located on page 345. Um, I just recommend that you review all of this. You probably need to reread um, going through this. This is a large um, area. So go ahead and make sure that you review all of this. Pathways of circulation, pulmonary and systemic. Okay. Here is a concept map how the process of aging affects our cardiovascular system. Um, the effectiveness and the rate of um, well, the regulation of, I should say, um, it depends greatly upon lifestyle, um, genetics. Um, so atherosclerosis has a large you know, this is why this is the leading killer in the United States, cardiovascular disease. Um, so narrowing of those vessels, so the atherosclerosis on here is a large portion of what happens um, in cardiovascular disease and decrease, leads to decreased blood flow. So hopefully you can understand these pathways here. <clears throat> Aging and cardiovascular system continue. These are the different... Um, what I just talked to you about, or how that um, on the concept map, what can contribute to cardiovascular disease, um, smoking cessation, exercise, dietary, stress reduction, healthy lifestyle, um, normal weights, those types of things. Um, 
yeah, you'll see the Go Red campaign for women. This is American Heart Association uh, awareness for um, women and cardiovascular disease. Um, very important in assessment is a health history. Um, we will get more into that. Um, allergies, past medical histories, medications, family histories, health promotion methods. It's very important that you get as thorough as possible um, information for this. Physical examination, general appearance. So what is their general appearance or vital signs? Um, orthostatic blood pressure, height and weight. Inspection, so very important upon inspection. Cardiac um, patients um, have a, can have a dusky, uh, that's in a critical condition. They can get that dusky kind of skin color. So their pallor does change. So it, um, just so you are aware, that is something upon your inspection that changes. Not just looking at like symmetry of their face and body, but you want to really look at their color. Um, <clears throat> extremities, their jugular vein distension. Yes, um, capillary refill, clubbing. Um, you can see this on patients. A very good illustration of this was um, this clubbing because normally you might want to think that you can only see this on someone that's older, someone that has cardiac issues, unless you see children that have it, which is a little bit more rare, but you can see that. But um, Claire Wineland, the um, young woman who had cystic fibrosis, and I had you watch the documentary, if you noticed, you could see the clubbing in her fingers. So this is the same thing that that is. It's a great illustration of that. And that's kind of what it is because she was very young and um, not any other problems had made, would make her fingers look like this, like you could say for adults, like you don't know what it might be from. But in her, it was a very clear illustration of clubbing. So this is early on and then this is more severe and it just kind of, they look like, more nod nodular at the end. That's the only way I can think to say it. Palpation, the point of maximum impulse. Um, extremity temperatures, edema, like checking for. Here is a great illustration of pitting edema. You all are very experienced with looking at this and assessing for this. We are on to page 351. Um, so look at, at that. Um, here's where we auscultate for heart sounds. <clears throat> can find murmurs. You guys are doing a great job at doing that in the hospital when you had time there. Okay, here is our QRS um, illustrations. This is S1, S2. Um, Note the different pulmonary sounds, heart sounds that you can have, uh, that you need to listen for. Um, atrial stiffness index, so blood pressure cuff, computer map, brachial. Um, this is identifying, helping you to identify atherosclerosis. Um, you can see it in a chest x-ray, a CT, and MRI as well. Okay, EKGs record the cardiac activity. We can see signs of a heart attack. Um, a cardiologist will be able to interpret that and tell you, um, what rhythm the patient is in as well. You can uh, measure. Those are very specific between um, QRS. Um, points and you want to. Um, we won't get. I don't want to sidetrack myself. I'm sorry. Going into that. I want to stay on this and we will. Stay on our slides and. Um, so echo, we will have um, an ultrasound of the heart, which that is to find out, they can see like mitral valve regurgitation. So if a, there's a leaky valve in there, an echocardiogram is the best way to pick that up. So this is um, along with EKG, echo, um, this is all included in heart workup, like they're gonna be getting. Um, so if you worked for a cardiologist, these are the things that you're going to be you can, they'll do a stress echocardiogram as well, which it will be something that 
they'll do lying down and they will induce. So if the person is unable to physically like walk on a treadmill and do a stress echocardiogram, they will induce that with nuclear isotopes and it causes your heart to be stressed and show, it induces what you would be doing when you exercise so that the they, um, technician can uh, document how in the echo where your heart is, if it's having any issues, um, a transesophageal echocardiogram. So this is much more invasive, right? They're going to anesthetize your throat. They place a probe in your esophagus, and they can do um, as well, get some pictures and see what's function, see if there's any malfunctioning happening. Here is what I was talking about. Here is a stress test. Okay, and then these are the nuclear radioisotopes that I was talking about that induce. Um, so don't let all of this scare you. This is just talking about if they can't do a regular stress test like this, they'll be lying down. So say they have like bad knees or bad back or they are, you know, they want to still make sure that their heart is functioning and what, is, what happens when it's stressed. So they will do a nuclear study um, stress test. Tilt table test, lying to standing. This is to check for blood pressure and heart rate. Um, this is more less invasive testing that's done. A Doppler ultrasound, um, like I said. Um, identify patients correctly. Use at least two ways to identify them always. That's just part of your six rights. Um, this is done to make sure that each patient gets the correct medicine. That's weird, just thrown in there. Um, okay, blood studies. These are um, with troponin levels, right? Um, we get the cardiac biomarkers, C reactive proteins. These are all the things that we check for cardiac. Um, get important test results to the right staff person on time. It's very important that you know what are the normal levels when you are working with a cardiac patient because it's time sensitive. So, um, Making sure that, you know, you are waiting. It, those will be done daily often um, or maybe even throughout the day. And so you have to be getting those to the doctor as needed. Um, invasive studies. Okay, more invasive studies would include angiograms, cardiac catheterizations. Um, these types of studies which are done by the physician in a cath lab. This is a cath lab. So they're going to insert, um, I, I mentioned to you guys, I think you know, it used to be in the femoral artery only. Um, they now use like the uh, brachial artery, radial artery, um, and they will, it's less, um, it's better because um, for after the procedure, they don't have to have their immobilization. It's much easier to immobilize their wrist versus their femoral artery. So um, it's um, better for the patient and the physician is able to still get a very good image. They feed that catheter through the uh, wrist uh, all the way to your heart and then they're able to see where along the way are there narrowing of the arteries, the atherosclerosis, what needs to be repaired, what needs to be removed, those types of things. Okay, so obviously our lifestyles have great impact on our cardiac function. Um, Anti-embolism, so devices, uh, these are TED hose, stockings, um, oxygen, um, therapeutic interventions, all these medications. Um, cardiac surgery, um, these are like if they're going to have bypass surgery, um, there's a lot of different types of heart surgery they do now. Um, here is a bypass pump. So they uh, bypass your heart onto a pump so that they can do what repairs are needed. There is just a shot of what's going on in a cardiac surgery. Here are your review questions. Again, we have now five chapters left in cardiac review. So I, I 
recommend that you use all of these as another tool. Do all the questions. Do the questions in the back of your book. 